Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I got a big update on what's going on in the tropics. Potentially could be some good news, but what I'm seeing still in the ensembles is showing that we still have a huge problem on our hands. Now, the latest information is you can see the tropical wave. You can see you got some convection on the north. You got some convection on the southern side as well. Now, when you look at your higher altitudes, you can see that you have a lot of dust, a lot of this dry air in front of it that's going to be transitioning with it as it goes across the Caribbean. And you also can see in your mid latitudes that it's still there, but it's trying to moisturize the atmosphere a little bit more, a little bit more moisture, trying to build up an atmosphere to where this could potentially start forming up. But you can see the latest update is still 10% in the next 48 hours, 40% in the next seven days. And that's all because if it takes that northern track and taps into that deep ocean heat, Content this is what the ensembles are seeing, and it is trending. Also, what the deterministic models are seeing are also trending. So, we have two different trends I'm going to show you in this video. Now, if it's the northern side, it will start building up very fast. This is where that 10% comes in. If it goes on that southern side, is where maybe something could form later up and still go north after it gets into the Gulf by the Bay of Campeche close to Mexico. So if it still makes it over there, we're still going to have big problems and it still can either go north, go into the Eastern Pacific and go right up towards the Southwest of the U S I, I will show you the latest information. It's pretty wild. Now the latest information on the Euro, there's the ensembles. Not only does it show that we could finally get some low pressure built up in Northern Gulf of Mexico, this would be some, some more tropical moisture coming up. And so far it has gone down in their percentage for anything to form, but showing this will potentially start forming up as we go into Friday and Saturday, as it comes to the Western Caribbean. Now this is according to the Euro after that, showing it probably could strengthen up and either turn to the western Gulf of Mexico, maybe even head a little bit further to the north, or still go right to the east-northeast of the Gulf of Mexico. Either way, showing strong storms, either one of them still showing hurricanes after that. So trying to find trends on this, let's look at the GFS ensembles. And this is the latest one. All these are the 12Z to balloon data. You see it shows it's going to be possibly something weak, that's what we're seeing also in the models all the way to six days out. Then it's going to be about a Western Caribbean and still showing it's going to go West Northwest and then form up to the Northwestern side of Gulf of Mexico. That is what the GFS is seeing as well. Now the latest on the Canadian, it shows that it will stay on that Northern track right by Jamaica as you go by the fifth showing it starting to strengthen up as it passes by Jamaica. And that would be real because the northern side of the Caribbean is where all that deep ocean heat content is, just like I showed you in this morning's video, showing it will go on that west-northwest track and start going into the Gulf after that. That is all the ensembles, all three of them. All three of them are showing a northward push into the Gulf of Mexico. So we see what the model data is thinking and look what the Euro is showing. Chance for a tropical depression as it goes on a southern side, more of a favorable environment. And as it goes across the Yucatan to the Bay of Campeche, potentially something in the Eastern Pacific and something forming in the Western Gulf of Mexico. We've been seeing that for a minute that the Western Gulf of Mexico could potentially be having this big problem. Now remember, if there was to take this path, it would go out to the east. So there would be more impacts as this system's leaving. Now this is where we get into some good news <laughs> and trying to get some kind of good news of this update. The deterministic models are trending that this trough coming down with this cold front is going to be northern and the strong winds on the southern side is not going to be strong. That way it will not pull this wave northern. It will stay weak and travel to the west, potentially because it's getting problems with the dust. And by the time it gets to the Bay of Campeche, keep in mind, this is still seven, eight days away. The trough will be passed. It won't be able to pull it north. But now you got high pressure over here, potentially giving it favorable environment, potentially causing a block. You can see on the 500 millibar vorticity that as this system goes to the west, you can see that it does stretch out that high pressure, keeping that pushed to the west, where it will miss that trough. The trough is not strong, according to what we see on this model data, and it rolls off to the west, into the eastern Pacific. This is the latest by the Euro. 
and this is trending for the most part. When you look with the Canadian, it wobbles to Jamaica, but then it goes right back to that area, showing almost the same thing. You got this high pressure starting to steer that to the west. It misses the beginning of the trough, and it gets into the Bay of Campeche. Then after that, it just goes towards Mexico and just kind of dissipates, and maybe something builds into the eastern Pacific while we get an extending high pressure all the way into the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see the latest on GFS. It is going all the way to the Western Caribbean, just like the other ones, showing that high pressure is there. It could go north, but that trough is not strong enough to pull it north. It's stronger on the northern side, not the southern side. And the system's too weak and not together yet to where it's tapping into this high pressure and swinging around. Still getting steered to the west, but it's not over at this point. At this point, this is where we're sitting, and we literally have a low pressure system going around counterclockwise we have a high pressure over here going around clockwise actually giving it favorable shear which would help it spin up a little bit strengthen up a little bit if it were to play as a block as well and look at the last few runs of gfs showing it could come right back again maybe something in the eastern pacific and maybe something in the western gulf of mexico it's just too far at the end of the run to take it seriously but it's still the western gulf of mexico is where we're seeing a lot of potential buildup from this tropical wave now still showing this is still going to bring a nice cool front bring down those 50s as you go through friday it's still going to bring the heat on the western side but the eastern side of the u.s is still going to get this nice cool front that's going to come down as you go through friday here's saturday morning there's saturday morning you see i agreed with the euro it took away all that deep coldness still it could still reach down a little bit more so as you go through saturday and as you go through sunday sunday seems like the big day of where this could reach down the best maybe eastern texas could be in the 60s the south could be in the 60s as well for a little while and maybe even some 50s as that moves to the east but then right after that is just like i told you before this cold air is going to retract back it's going to be in the northeast the longest but then it's going to retract back and we're going to be in that heat again. So if you look at the heat, all this black is all 80s. All this white is getting to the 90s. But all this pink starts getting to the 100s. And this is your temperatures. There's not your heat indices. So you can see the heat comes right back to the same areas that get this cold blast. The heat comes right back as we go through the middle of September. Then maybe a little bit better on the northern side of the Great Lakes in the northeast after that. But the heat does come back after the cold blast. And looking at the latest data for your potential velocity anomaly, you can see where I'm looking at. This is where Central America is. This is directly on the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico. So a little bit to the west of that would be the western Gulf of Mexico. Then it would be in the eastern Pacific. So when you go to look at the latest data, you can see literally where we're looking at that this is either in the western Gulf of Mexico or slowly going towards the eastern Pacific. This is your latest update with the Euro, the close range. And when we go by the long range, we're still seeing the same thing. A little bit more strength for that storms that's coming for late September, early October. But we're still seeing the same thing. Around the 10th or 11th, it's going to strengthen up. And it's still showing right in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. Multiple systems showing right into the center of our Gulf of Mexico. Maybe a little bit on the eastern side. So trying to bring some good news out of this because the ensembles is trending one thing. The deterministic models are trending another thing. So we bring the icon in. The icon is the one that told us what Barrel was going to do, and it was pretty good and pretty accurate. So icon is still showing that it will pass by the Lesser Antilles, go by Jamaica by Wednesday, and this wave is going quickly. You can see the high pressure going around it, steering that to the west and south. You see the direction of it. Now, after it goes by the Bay of Campeche, showing it will take that southern route, not the northern route, like the ensembles are seeing. It's agreeing with the deterministic models. But agreeing somewhere down there, when we get this cold front, when we get this cold front, all that cooler air will create convection along the front right here and create these storms. So showing possibly, while this wave is meeting that front, it could get together somehow 
and spark up something in the western Gulf of Mexico being a tropical wave and front induced energy coming together potentially could form something. It could be too late as well. And this could still go right out to the west. This could still be getting blocked by a high pressure and just bottle up right here for quite some time. Still showing on your tropical cyclone probabilities that will still take that path on the southern side, still going to Bay of Campeche, and still showing right after that it will go on that northward turn, just like we're kind of seeing. So I believe this cold front is going to play a big part on helping this wave get together after land interaction possibly that's if it takes that southern track we're still a couple of days away from that so i will update you first thing in the morning so we can see what the latest information is it's a little bit weird seeing two different trends between the models and the ensembles and you got to believe the ensembles more than you would the models so that would put it in a bad case scenario if i'm trying to keep it on good spirits i believe it will be a good case scenario i think we could see somewhat of a stall in the bay of campeche nothing like no harvey and nothing stupid like that i think we could see a stall effect happening and maybe eventually getting pushed out because we are seeing with the canadian that that extended high pressure will go into that gulf of mexico and that would help push that further to the west. So I'm trying to keep this on a good note. I'm really hoping that that is what's, what's going to happen. And I really hope that this trough comes down with some cooler air and really helps everyone in the south, the southeast, especially for Florida. Y'all really don't get a break when these cold fronts come through. So I really hope y'all feel this one. Now, before you go real quick, Isaiah 65, 17 through 25. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. But be ye glad, and rejoice forever in that which I create. For, behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die in a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit, they shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are, the, are of the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass, that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. And dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. Amen. Have a great night, everybody. I will see you first thing in the morning. Hopefully we have some good news here. Hopefully it sticks to this plan and don't affect anyone. And just pushes away very weakly. That would be great. But then when we look at the favorable environment, something is building along that time. So it's going to affect someone. Tell me what you think down below. Do you believe the models trend or do you believe the ensembles trend? Now, usually you go with the ensembles, but the ensembles change as well. So tell me what you believe down below. Just remember, all glory goes to God. Our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always keeps you safe every day of your life. And forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. The true control member. <laughs> what he says goes.